In 2016, when I finally decided to pursue the impeachment of Judge Berrigan, I reviewed my website for references to newspaper articles that were published years ago when I was first attempting to disqualify her from my lawsuits against Tulane. In a table of my appellate actions, there was a listing of four references to articles from the Times-Picayune of New Orleans and the Advocate of Baton Rouge, and I decided to add these to my website. Physical copies of these articles had been destroyed by Hurricane Katrina, along with most of our other paper files. However, through the generosity of the New Orleans Public Library, my wife had a non-resident library card, which gave us access to Newsbank, which is an online resource that maintains a comprehensive database of articles published in major newspapers. Using Newsbank, we had no problem finding three of the four referenced articles. However, there was no trace of the most informative one, the article that appeared on the front page of the Times-Picayune issue of May 8, 2001, even after searching numerous possible keywords. In addition, search engines like Google also proved futile in finding that article. On the assumption that I had correctly referenced the article when it first appeared, I decided to see if it had been captured on microfilm when it was first published. Here I am at this Shreveport Public Library, holding a box containing a reel of microfilm that includes the May 8, 2001 edition of the Times-Picayune, and sure enough, on the screen, there is the missing article on page 1 which is continued on page 10 of the newspaper. Copies of these pages were then printed out, and I was then able to reprint all four articles on the Tulane Link website. Susan Finch, the author of the May 8th article, was a prolific journalist who covered topics that included the judiciary, and in 2001, she wrote at least 143 articles. From the Newsbank listing of her 2001 articles, it is clear that her May 8th reporting of my attempt to recuse Judge Berrigan is conspicuously absent. Clearly, the deletion of this informative article was not unintentional. Instead, it appears to be the result of pressure from some powerful party who wanted to remove information it considered embarrassing from the public record. In my opinion, only two parties would have the clout to purge such an unwanted record from Internet databases, and those parties are likely to be either Tulane University or Judge Helen Ginger Berrigan. On October 26, 2016, while this story was being prepared, my wife contacted Newsbank about the article that had been missing from its database for more than 15 years. Eight days later, on November 4th, she received a reply stating that the article had now been added to Newsbank's database and that the omission looked like the result of a technical problem rather than a, quote, editorial selection. While it is good that the article is now accessible online, we suspect that its omission was indeed the result of an editorial selection, because another previously indexed front page article from the same May 8, 2001 edition was now shown in duplicate, indicating that the article in question had been selectively removed. At this point, one cannot be certain about who objected to the article's online distribution. However, it is unfortunate that the Times-Picayune would allow such an incident to impugn its long-standing reputation for excellence and integrity, which it had garnered over the years.